Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Next Shot, where I'm joined again with my co-host, Luke Lukasik. Luke, how's it going in Georgia, man? Hey, it is beautiful down here. Very good. So the weather here has been a lot nicer. It, it's been a little wet from the rain, but I think we're we're starting to trend into nicer weather to get out and do more shooting. So uh, what do you what do you think about 70 degree weather just about every day? You know, as long as it's not humid in 70, I love it. Georgia, it is probably a little more humid than up here. So yes, you're right. yes. Uh, today's episode, guys, we are going to be discussing something that uh, Luke and I were playing around with as far as magazine covers, and we chose to do a uh, bride slash wedding magazine cover for this episode because, uh, Luke, as you know, uh, we just we booked our first wedding February the 20th. Uh, up here in North Carolina. So, you know, with this whole COVID thing, it was a little harder to book weddings last year, but fortunately we had great weather. So we were able to get really good portraits of the bride and groom. And uh, we got the copyright releases for those so we can publish those as uh, promotions and stuff. So I sent nice. you a couple of those. Uh, so, you know, you chose a couple of the images that look really good uh, for magazine style covers. Uh, one thing you do have to remember, which you've seen when you went to go do the edit, is you have to have a lot of headspace uh, above your subject when you think about magazine covers. So um, so we have a slideshow that we're going to cover with you guys as well that have some of those images. And we'll walk you through a few steps that we, we chose. And uh, I think I did mine in Photoshop, of course, and you did yours through which uh, software? Canva. Uh, it's actually just a website. Uh, you can make a ton of stuff on Canva. Right, right. Uh, which I did play around with that a little bit today once we discussed uh, you know, that software as well. So we'll go over that with you guys as well. So, Okay, Luke, so let's jump right into the slideshow and let's cover a few of these uh, magazine covers that we did. How's that? Right, let's do it. All right. Okay, Luke, so whenever I discuss doing the magazine cover uh, of the bride slash groom, uh, what were your first thoughts? You know, I, I kind of got excited. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's different than the photography. It's more of a design aspect, but it, it kind of helps you, you know, just plan out potential future shots, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Just so that way you know what you're looking for, what to add in, like, like you talked about before, with make sure you have enough headspace. And it just, it was a good practice to kind of just play around with, with images on it. Yeah. And if you've ever, you know, uh, kids nowadays probably don't remember magazines as much as we do but you know i remember uh some of the the earlier magazines that i used to subscribe to were like lowrider magazine mini truck and so it was more car stuff yeah so you know the angles that they had to shoot and and the space and looking at the background you know, like at a car show or something you can't have too much distracting stuff going on on a cover photo uh and for those of photographers out there that were shooting uh, car shows and you know, even you know sports illustrated uh, when you start looking back at some of the older magazines and the covers uh, the image itself had to be tack sharp you know it had to be uh, croppable so i'm sure they had a lot of space you know left right top and bottom mm -hmm. uh, because you know when you when you go into the editing side of it like we did uh, which we'll show you here in a second uh, you gotta uh, crop means everything to the feel of a cover of a magazine. Would you agree? A hundred percent. So like, here's an image that we shot with the bride and groom. And again, this was our first wedding for this year. Uh, it was a staged shot. You know, we had taken multiple images, uh, but we did full body and what we call it a mid shot, which is like a waist up shot. And then we did a close up, which we, on this image, we did a horizontal which cut at the uh, flowers there and right of, just right of above his head. Um, and when you get a variety of shots like that, which only took like four or five seconds to change those zooms uh, when you're shooting. But in this one, I actually talked to the bride and groom about doing a magazine cover or a cover for like a, a book or something like that. And uh, when I shot it, that's what I had in mind. So when I did the magazine cover, which, this is the image that we got. So I, I left enough headspace, as we called it, uh, right above the groom so that I can add the title in, put the date in there, 
And of course, you know, at the bottom right, to make it more authentic, you got to find a decent looking barcode that that's convincing, you know, because mm-hmm. that's how magazine covers are distinguished between whether it be a poster or something like that. So, and of course I had to put in the next shot at the bottom too. So, so Luke, overall, a template that you can use if you save this as a, a layers file or a PNG file, um, you know, any wedding that you do going forward, the only thing you would have to change is either the date mm-hmm. or if you want to change some of the titles on there, if you want to put their names on there, you can do that as well. But overall, how do you think this looks as far as something that you could do for your bride and groom? Yep. Yeah. I, I like it's a good idea. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's kind of like uh, when you're a kid, you get like a, your mock uh, sports card or something. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I like it. It's it's good. It's easy. It's kind of a it, it's a extra selling point in your package. You know, j- just to kind of get have fun with it. You know? Yeah. And if nothing else, you know, you can advertise your business with it. Uh, you can also they can share this on social media. There's a lot of things they can do with it as a a couple. You know, they can get it printed out, framed. Uh, It could be a conversation piece for people that come over later. Um, So, you know, overall, I think it's a a pretty good idea. So, Luke, tell me a little bit about your experience with Canva on these next images coming up. Yeah, So Canva is just a web website where you can do everything from social media posts to magazine covers to business cards. I mean, literally the options are endless on Canva. Uh, There's a free version and a pro version. Um, the pro version, you can get a free sample for like 30 days. And then I think it's like 12 bucks a month. Um, but definitely worth the investment. Uh, I think if, if you're really going to be a social media person and on social media and making posts, uh, they give you a billion layouts. Um, you just kind of pl- pl- plug and fill, uh, with whatever you need. So did you type in like uh, magazine covers or wedding yeah, templates? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if, if you type in magazines, uh, it get, has like 10 different categories and you can kind of pick and choose ones. Uh, and it gives you covers and like five sample pages and you can just fill in uh, whatever your text is or whatever your ver- verbiage is and, and your images and adjust them and slide them and move them. But yeah, th- there's templates for pretty much everything you could possibly need uh, on Canva. Awesome. So here's the images that you come up with, with the samples that I I submitted to you. So the bridal magazine, I I like it, you know, and plus you have a few of the things on the right hand side and, and, you know, the, the image does not feel the total screen Mm -hmm. of the magazine cover, which I thought was pretty cool too. But uh, I think you did a really good job of trying to, to pick the layout that fit the image. It almost is symmetrical, you know, where the bridal is more to the right. So I like the layout of that as well. Uh, the, the cool thing with Canva is like your text. Even if you put a black text in, it'll take images or colors from your images and you can pick a color from the image. You know what I'm saying it'll pick like the top five or six colors that are dominant. And that, that way you can change your text to that color. You can change your background to that color. It just kind of helps you make your whole image flow together. Yeah, it is a really nice blend. So, all right, let's look at the next one. This one here, uh, this I told her when we were shooting this image, I said, this is the cover of your magazine. Uh, and she was like, no, really? You know, I don't, I don't know how it looks on your side, but the sun was over on the right-hand side setting behind the trees. I mean, it was just a really good time of day mm-hmm. to get a nice image of the dress, the bouquet, uh, her smile. I mean, it turned out really good. So, uh, you know, to me, I, I like it. It's simple you know, but yet it it explains what's going on, you know? So tell me a little bit about this one here. Well, you know, I said it was all about the shot. You, you got it. You nailed it. Um, This one was just a little bit more subtle of, of a, of an image. Uh, Again, it's not the whole cover, uh, but it just, it it blended it all together. Uh, Those Browns kind of played a part into the, the the cover itself, as opposed to just being a solid white background Um, and and the image. It, it, Everything played to the image. No. Yeah. I think you did a good job there too. So uh, again, guys out there watching the show, uh, Luke has explained that if you want to play around with some of these magazines, I mean, even, you know, the people at home that have pets, right. I mean, you can probably do a pet magazine cover. uh, Some of the images that you guys have shot with uh, your DSLR or even your phone, you know, in portrait mode would look great on a magazine cover. Wouldn't you agree? hundred percent, you know, and, and just going through, you know, and, and uploading a few images and just trying and playing with it, 
you know, you can make a travel magazine, you can make, you know, just a kid magazine, whatever, whatever you're looking to make, it's, it's an option there. Even the low rider magazine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next thing we want to cover is fontspace.com, uh, which I found playing around with some of the font searches that I did. Uh, they do have free commercial and non-commercial use. Uh, here's one of the fonts that I did from that website. Uh, saved it as a, um, a PNG and a JPEG so that I can use it. Uh, if we need to put it on something, you know, we can still use that, that font. Uh, but, it, you know, playing around with fonts, you know, Photoshop has a lot of preloaded fonts and there's some that you can download um, as well and add it to your, your library there. So Luke, you had mentioned that you like to use defont.com. So tell me, tell me what you like about defont. You know, defont is an endless supply of fonts. Um, and whatever kind you're looking for, you know, you just, you, there's categories, you search it, but you can type in, let's say, the category that you're looking for, or if you want to write your name, you write your name in the box and search it. It changes all the font styles to that text that you typed out. Um, so you can kind of get a good idea of, of what it's going to look like in the end. But uh, there is free and commercial ones uh, to use. Uh, you just have to pay that little fee to the, the person that created the font uh, to use it commercially. Right. And, and that's the thing, you know, a lot of the fonts that you have, uh, whether it be on your phone through some apps, or if you have, um, like say Photoshop, a lot of that stuff, it's, it's more or less, you know, you've got, you probably have more fonts than you need, but you mm. never know what font is going to make like the cover of the magazine or look a lot better. It depends on if you want it to be fancy or if you want it to be bold. So, yeah, I mean, there's, it's good to have a good font library. Would you agree on that too? A thousand percent, you know, a, a font can make or break something, you know, that's true. That's true. And you can use, you can overuse fonts as well. Yes. Yes. All right. I've got, uh, mine, which is the font space pulled up and I've also got the font, which is the one that you use. So let's take a look at both of those right quick and discuss them. Okay. Okay. So Luke, here is the website for font space. Uh, as we discussed, you know, there's a lot of things you can do with, uh, uh, font space and defont.com. So on this one, I typed in the next shot here mm -hmm. and you can adjust the size that you want the letters to be. You can also choose whether you want commercial use, non-commercial use. It changes the, the fonts that you have options for again, changing the colors. Uh, so here's a few of the fonts that pull up uh, when we choose the commercial use. So something like this one, Kaluna script, which is pretty cool. If you were doing something uh, fancy, mm -hmm. um, you know, and here's one that looks like preschool, you know, it's, it's just, there's, like you say, there's unlimited fonts that you can use for websites like this. Uh, the, the image of the, uh, over here to the right, if you click on that, there's where you can save, uh, like as a PNG, as we call it, or a layer file when it has the checkerboard background, or you can choose to have a solid background in case you wanted to put it up against a white or a black, mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, your choice there. But, uh, that's what I like about using a site like this because it's, it's quick. You type in what you want, you get to see the preview. So let's go into the Defont website and kind of walk me through that. Yeah. So, I mean, you pick uh, whichever theme you're looking for um, as a, and there's so many options you, you you'll, you'll get lost at times. Uh, and you, again, you just on the right hand side, you can just download it. Yeah. Um, and all these are free for, it'll even say 100% free um, for all personal use. But if, if you want to have a commercial use, usually if you donate to the author, yeah. um, you know, for a little fee, uh, you can use it to do whatever you want, commercial, personal, um, and there won't be any issues with it from that point forward. Gotcha. Yeah, like here it says 100% free, and then yeah. you got some says for personal use, mm -hmm. donate to author. So, yeah. So, Luke – Looking over here to the right hand side where it says like this one, the university um, font, 892,000 downloads. So let's say that it, you donate a dollar every time. So he could have made $892,000 on a font mm -hmm. just from donations. You know, and, and like I say, it depends on what you're using it for. And if you think it's worthy of a donation, you know, this site would be great. Uh, and if you have a font, that you you created and throw it on here you make and make a little money too here's one with one million downloads and it's easy a simple font 
Yep. It's an easy passive income, you know? This is true. Um, it's just, uh, but again, it, it, even if you paid $5, you know what I'm saying, to use it professionally, yeah. you know, um, it, it's a small fee to pay if it's going to make or break your business, you know? That's true. And I, it looks like this one was da- downloaded 4,511 times yesterday. So it looks like it's putting it in order of the most downloads from yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, that's the way I'm looking at it. So that's pretty cool though. And you got a lot of places on here where you can comment too, I guess, whether they like the font or whether they don't like the font. So, well, that's it for our font class. So let's jump back into the show. Next is coming Sue product review. So the, I'm walking through Walmart one day and, and we were shopping and I come across this um, intriguing cover of this guy jumping up and, and the camera said it would follow him around, you know, kind of like what you see on TV where, you know, you have somebody doing a cooking show or something and uh, they, they move over to the right and the camera pans to the right. And of course, you know, it pans to the left, comes back center. And you're thinking, you know, th- they got a cameraman or somebody helping them out, you know, uh, but this little thing called the chase by IJoy is 1488 at Walmart. So this is what caught my attention is that it's, it's a little base that is tripod mountable. Okay. Runs off of three AAA batteries. I believe it is. Uh, and you Bluetooth it to your phone so that when you move, it does face detection and it also does object detection. So I thought, you know, why not pick it up? Why not try it out? Maybe make a little video with it and we can have it on one of our episodes, you know? Yeah, for sure. So what is your thoughts on something like this? How do you think we can incorporate this, whether like down here on this picture, you can see it's a horizontal uh, picture of like a landscape or something. How do you think we can tie that in with the show? Well, you know, for someone like me who doesn't always have somebody who can record their video, that would be a good, good helpful uh, friend there to have, you know, you just pop it up, do your thing. And it just, it'll, it'll track me or yourself or whoever needs it to, uh, to record a video. And like we were discussing, you know, trying to make sure we do some more videos when we're outdoors, uh, maybe trying to set it up uh, and just do a, you know, how you set up your camera. How do you do uh, the background or, Mm -hmm. you know, how are you shooting certain things? You know, what lens we like to use when we're uh, doing landscapes or, a nice building or something and you have the the river uh down there at georgia i mean can you imagine putting it on object tracking and, and tracking the boat without touching those the ships thing, yeah you know and it's recording the whole time so you know that may be something we can can think about using it for in the future as well yeah all right luke so that's it for our slideshow let's jump back into the regular show and discuss a few other photography tips for the uh, viewers today okay all right let's do it so, Luke, the last thing we want to discuss is our website, the nextshot.fm. So, the website that you created, uh, we're going to jump in and take a look at it. Uh, for those of you that are watching our episodes, uh, or if you haven't seen the episodes in the past, we're going to show you how to get to those and also show you a few things that Luke's been working on on the website as well. Okay, Luke. So, here we are in our website for everybody out there, again, you know, that's uh, not familiar with our youtube channel you can also see everything uh luke's got links to the this is our last episode episode 18 so he's got a link to that on our home page and then we also have our little bios that uh we have on the home page as well and then um how to contact us is in there uh, but we're going to go to the portfolios first so you can click on our pictures pull up the portfolios and kind of see some of the images that we have posted in there. Uh, Luke, let's go back to yours. So Luke, here's some of your images as well. And again, guys, you know, we're, we're here to help you with your photography and your videos uh, and answer any questions that you may have. All right, Luke, so here's some of the episodes, some of the early episodes. So what do you think about these <laughs> screenshots that we've got up here? Uh, I think we've come a long way in 18 episodes. <laughs> we really have, you know, our bloopers episode did really well. Uh, but again, you know, 
just just going back and looking at some of the things that we discussed and and also how far we've we've come as far as our um I guess our show, you know, mm-hmm. and, and what we've learned, you know, even looking at the food photography episode 11 here, uh, this was a great episode. And even going back to the product photography uh, and having our special guest on, you know, Robert and Jonathan were both on here as well. But so again, here's our contact page. So if you want to get in touch with us, fill out your information here, hit send, or you can actually go up here and email us uh, your questions or concerns. Uh, things that you want to learn about photography, video, uh, Luke, what else? We I mean, really, they have every option right there. I mean, the only thing they don't have is our home address. This is you true. Know, <laughs> you got two emails, <laughs> and a telephone number, you know, there, there's more than enough ways to kind of just reach out. You know, we're not, we're not gonna, you know, we aren't a, a forum board where you ask a question, we're not going to beat you up over it. You know what I'm saying, uh, we're going to answer the best we can with what we know. That's true. Uh, one thing that we haven't really stressed on is our services, the things that we want to do. You know, one is the one on one Zoom classes. Luke or myself, I, I admit, we don't have a whole lot of time to put into the the episodes as far as prep work. I mean, we're, we're doing this stuff uh, to help you guys as you know, as quick as it comes to us. We get it down and we, we record it. Uh, but the Zoom classes that we would like to start doing, you know, I. I do a lot of Photoshop. Luke does a lot of Lightroom. I mean, there's there's some things that we can do, whether it be one on one or if you want to do it uh, during one of our episodes, we can do that as well. Um, our get out and shoot campaign. So basically, it's a challenge to make sure that everybody gets out and shoots something every week, and that's something that me and Luke try to do as well. Uh, whether it be you know a little bit of video around the house or something that we do with the kids, um, you know, you know, even on our way to work, coming home from work at least shoot something that way you stay challenged, uh, whether it be lighting lenses, camera, uh, the photo critique is one of our more important ones that we want to stress on because we love seeing everybody's work out there. Would you agree, Luke? hundred percent. Sometimes I'd rather see your work than my work. <laughs> it's because we really critique ourselves a lot. You know? And mm-hmm. that's, that's something that, you know, if you've never had a photo, uh, being broke down as far as lighting composure uh, you know if you if you just look at the edit style you know we're not here to to bust your chops on it we're just here to say hey you know here's what we would have done different here's what we like about the image uh, all the good photographers love doing critiques you know even and truth be I, told I would rather they do it to us as well you know yeah, I'm good with that too. You know, if you guys want to to see some of the images that we've done in our portfolio and say, hey, you know, I like the water drop image, but uh, if you would have turned it to a black and white, or if you would have did this a little different, or if you want to, you know, play around with a couple of the images, we don't mind. You know, it's something that we we would like to see a new viewpoint as well. And Luke and I do the same thing amongst each other. You know, to try to uh, help improve our editing style or. Uh, maybe do something in a different software that we've never used before. So, so Luke, again, you know, everybody out there, all of our viewers, all of you guys listening to this, these episodes that we have, uh, let us know how we're doing. You know, if there's anything that you guys want to learn about in the future episodes, uh, please let me or Luke know that way we can get some, some footage or uh, practice the edits or take the shots that you guys want us to take. Uh, Luke, we still need to try to plan an adventure uh, or an outing to do some photography within the next couple months. So yes. uh, we'll try to keep that on our calendar as well. Uh, last thing that we want to discuss with you guys is make sure you're leaving comments or suggestions, like in our YouTube, subscribe, uh, because that helps us grow as a, as a show in general. And it may be a year from now, it may be two years from now before we start making it big, but we are here to help you guys. And we love doing this show. Would you agree, Luke? A thousand percent. It makes <laughs> the week. It, it really does make the week. So, uh, you know, and, and if you have questions about cameras or, or anything like that as well, just make sure you send that to us. You know, we'll be glad to answer those questions for you. Until next time, keep shooting. See you next time, everybody. Me do my two steps.